Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace Church Live and uh, in the room. So I'm encouraged to see so many people uh, in the room. And we had a good group in first service. And uh, we're on internet right now, so I see the red lights on. So hello to all you guys out there uh, across the country, even around the world. Uh, we're also on Radio by Grace, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But this just keeps going and going and going. But uh, I'm just glad to be back safe and sound uh, from vacation, sabbatical. I can't say safe. I don't know about sound because um, you might want to check with Cindy on that. So altogether, we traveled about 4,000 miles, uh, lots of states, 77 hours in the vehicle together, me and Cindy. Now, she's in the room. I got to make sure I say this right. I only got mad one time. I mean, if you do the math, I mean, her and I together all that time. And just one time, and uh, was somewhere coming from Pennsylvania down into West Virginia. And uh, stopped at a restaurant that, um, you know, after 2,000 miles, by the time, you know, stopped. And their bathrooms were closed. And I got mad for like three minutes. It went long. <laughs> repented and the rest of it was great so thank you thank you for praying probably too much information than you needed right off the bat but we're going to talk uh but tracking grace church while we were gone and and watching it and all the stuff uh we were able to catch it you know almost every service and just blessed to watch you guys together in this and i've got some good news as we kind of start today in a way we're in john chapter 7 so if you have your Bibles, get John chapter 7. If you're out there on the internet, open your Bible. Uh, let's find John chapter 7 together. I'm going to jump to John 7, 37. One of my favorite portions, actually one of my favorite stories in all of the Bible. Um, you say, why are we in John 7, 37? Well, it actually is going to kind of springboard us into next Sunday. If the Lord doesn't come and we get to go into, you know, the fall season. So um, I made the decision. We're going to start the Gospel of John next Sunday. Wow. Let me, let me see. Okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. When somebody first gets saved, you want them to read the Gospel of John. And I just shared with my second service on this Sunday that we have the extreme privilege together, if the Lord tarries, to go through the Gospel of John. Well, that's kind of what I expected. You know, like, oh, man, going back to John. John, do you know how long it's been since we've been in the Gospel of John? Landry was two years old the last time we went through John. Landry. It's been since 1994. It takes a while to preach through the Bible, so we're going to bust back to the Gospel of John, amen? amen. And uh, learn more about Jesus and all this kind of stuff. There again, we don't do it for information. I'm not doing it for information. I want to be transformed to be more like the Lord Jesus as I walk with Him and His Holy Spirit. So it's for a trans. It's actually to make our lives better to look more like Jesus. So we're going to be in. John, like officially next Sunday, but to jumpstart that a little bit today, um, I want to be in John chapter 7, verse 37. To me, it's one of the key passages in all of the Bible, in all the Bible. You guys there? So if I read it, are you ready? Don't, don't trust me. Make sure this is what it says. John seven thirty-seven. on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood, cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Father, I thank you that as we come together this morning, 
that we have the profound privilege of opening up your word, your sacred word again. That as you breathed your word and then preserved your word, you've given all of us a copy of it. We've got it on our cell phones, our computers, and many, many, many copies in our homes and our lives. We thank you for this love letter that you've sent our way so that we can actually know God. That we can read and study it and come to find out all 66 books, the subject, the hero, the focus is the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we come to honor our hero today and to run to Jesus. Lord, let us run to Jesus, I pray, this morning. And to hear him, what he would have us do. Lord Jesus, I invite you to this place. As well as everyone that's watching, Lord, or listening, we invite you to come into our presence. We don't assume it, Lord. We invite you. We want you to be the honored guest and to speak to us today. That when we leave, Lord, we might be in better shape than when we showed up. I confess, I need a fresh drink for second service, and so I come to you again, Lord. Thank you for the scriptures that we have. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that we have. But I pray that filling of the Spirit to the point where it's like a river rushing, flowing out of my life, out of our church, I pray. You know the needs represented here. You know the confusion. You know the weight that we carry through this season. Help us, Lord, not just to survive, but to somehow thrive in the middle of a, a mess, the COVID mess. I've seen half the country. It's affected everything. Then you throw in the elections, Lord, and the complications of protests and riots, the economy, <laughs> Beirut, Lebanon, Israel, two hurricanes or at least typhoons coming, tropical storms. Oh, Lord, it's a mess. But what would you have for me? What would you have for us? I pray a fresh drink today from Jesus so that in spite of it, Lord, even within our own families, our city, where we live, where we work, where we go to school, that in spite of the mess, we might be a source of refreshment, that the Holy Spirit would be pleased to flow through us, from us, I ask for that. Thank you for Grace Church, Lord. Thank you that I've sensed that already and that you've been faithful as we just keep coming to your word, to your spirit, most of all to your son. And we pray for a fresh drink today. Thank you for all of these, Lord, the ones watching, the ones listening. Draw us closer to yourself. That when it's said and done, Jesus would be the one lifted up. He's the only one that's worthy that all honor and glory would go unto him. It's in his blessed name all God's people would say. Run to Jesus. We just have to keep doing that. I, I really believe that we have. After 160 days of COVID, I really believe Grace Church is still running to Jesus. I, I saw it, matter of fact, a uh, we, we had some things happen to us while we were on sabbatical, just kind of post you like, well, what do you do when you go on sabbatical? Well, if I said the best food, the best food, can I see the picture for the best food? Uh, we're actually with my mom who lives in North Carolina, Hidden Night, North Carolina, and that's my sister, and that's my brother-in-law, Larry. Larry made from scratch, from scratch, he made the best lasagna I've had in two years. Why? Because it was made from scratch, in Hidden Night, North Carolina, and telling you, it was on 
unbelievable. Matter of fact, I sit here thinking, I stand here thinking, wow, that would be good. But what, what, okay, so that would be like the best, if I said the best date while I was gone, the best date, dun, da, da, da. <laughs> well, of course you have to say, well, what that picture doesn't represent is we probably went out 10, 12 times together, and it all pretty much looks like that, and you say, what fancy restaurant, that's Cracker Barrel. That's highfalutin for us. <laughs> and uh, um, you, you know I'm married to gold. You can pray for my wife because she's married to me. And, uh, but, but I love it. I, lo I, I actually love The best part about our time away, we see relatives and family. We don't go see stuff. We see relatives. But that's just a lot of alone time. Her and I together in the car, 75 hours. Do the math. Best date for 30 days. Thank you, baby. If I said, okay, the best salad. Can I see the best salad? You would think we're at a restaurant salad bar, but my sister actually made that, and uh, I just thought that was, okay, the best dessert, the best dessert. That's our grandson, Luke, and Luke's uh, 10 years old, and Luke's got an ice cream cone with his nanny. But I actually, my best dessert was with Lenny Rose, and so Lenny Rose turned seven, and so Cindy and I took her out for her birthday lunch date kind of thing, and then she got to pick anywhere she wanted for dessert. She chose five guys. Now, you need to know, I usually don't get milkshakes. Usually, I, I just don't. And for sure, I usually don't because they're like five bucks a piece. But Lindy Rose wanted, so we went. And then I found out of Five Guys that you get to pick your flavors, as many flavors as you want. So I was there. I thought, okay, I want a chocolate, peanut butter, coffee shake. <laughs> Changed my life. <laughs> I could taste the chocolate. The peanut butter, and then the coffee kicks in. You know how it does? I think I found a new friend. <laughs> Thank you, Lenny Rose. Just wanted to share that with you. You say, well, what is this? Really, it's all a setup for the best illustration. The best illustration I saw for our church. Matter of fact, when I saw this bug, can I see the bug? When I saw this bug on the side of a camping trailer in Fredericksburg, Virginia. When I saw this bug, I immediately thought of our church, Grace Church in Amarillo. And you thought, why? Well, before I tell you and show you why, I thought of all of us together is because, well, first we, we tried to figure out what kind of bug that is. Can I see all the bugs together? This is the way they hang out, okay? And so if you really focus in on one of them, and you look at it pretty close, and then there's all these different, okay, it's called the assassin bug. It's called a stink bug. It's called a kissing bug. You, you don't want this thing in your bed, by the way, you don't, from what we can tell. And it's also called a ninja bug. And you say, why did you think of our church? Well, because this bug is always together. They, at least the ones I was looking at, not that I went looking for bugs, okay. But they, they were all together. Matter of fact, that first picture and this picture are taken in a different span of about six days. They're always together. Even though, even though something is trying to separate them, they are just together. And I thought of our church because, you know, we, after 160 days, we're still together. Now, here's the way the illustration works. Can I see the, the video? The finger shows up, and the finger's trying to get these bugs to separate. Social distancing, the finger of COVID. Hey, put on your mask. But somehow the bugs are doing that and still staying together. And then the finger continues to kind of drive them. Oh, no, the elections are coming. What are we going to do? But they're still together. And then you throw in the protests and the riots, but they're still together. Like, oh, somebody get rid of that finger. And I thought of our church. 
Because that's actually true, isn't it? I mean, here we look back on the last 160 days, and it's been so scary in one way, trying to separate us and get us to quit. And then here comes the next one and the next one. And you say, but here's all I'm saying. We're still together, guys. We're still together. And we have visitors in the room. And some people say, well, you must, you must all be the same political party. No. Well, you must all agree about the protests. No. Well, you must all wear masks all the time. No. What do you agree about? Jesus. By the way, we together with the finger of all these threats continue to stay together and run to Jesus. Amen? Well, we all need to be running to Jesus is what we all need to be doing. Well, if we could all just agree about running to Jesus, you know why? Because he's the only one that can satisfy. He's the only one who can produce what we were left here to do. You mean get our way? No. For the gospel to go out through his body in times of great confusion. Well, don't you care? Hey, listen, I care about every one of those issues. But what thrills me is that we get to run to Jesus and then he produces in us this river of life. That's why when I was trying to care, scare the, the, you didn't, well, what kind of church are we? Well, I don't think we're the stink church. I don't think we're the kissing church, at least with COVID running around, we can't be the kissing church. And I hope we're not the assassin church, but I would say, let's be the ninja church. Like, da, ah, yeah, with the gospel. We're the, we're the ninja church, and we're going to hang together, we're going to be filled with the Spirit, and we're going to be what Jesus wants us to be. When everybody else is going nuts, guys, they're going nuts. You can feel the pressure. First time ever. You know, I'm driving around the country with Texas plates on my car. Listen, Texas is not a popular place right now because of COVID. I was thankful Ohio let me just drive through. I don't, I'm, not need, I'm sitting here, I just need to get over there to Pennsylvania. And they let me do it. It's crazy. But Jesus left us here at Western and Plains so that we could have this river of life coming out of us. That people could know we're, we're a source of refreshment, of hope, of the gospel, of the Holy Spirit. See, don't we know the source? The source right here? We're running to Jesus. We're a ninja church. What does that actually mean? Well, the source, verse 37. On the last day. Can I hear you say last day? That great day of the feast. It's not just telling us a calendar. It, it's the last day of the great day of the feast. They're celebrating Feast of Tabernacles, which is the last feast of the year for Israel. Feast of Tabernacles is when they would all, you know, go camping out in the front yard and remember what it was like for Israel when they had to camp out for 40 years, they would camp out once a year for seven days just to remember God's faithfulness to Israel. So that's why in application, we're going to all go camping this week in our front yard. It's kind of a joke, okay? You can if you want. You'll remember real quick <laughs> what it was like as they trusted the Lord. But they would camp out. And, and then every day they would go down to the Gion Springs and they would get water and they would bring the water up to the temple. And they'd pour it out there before the altar, before the Lord, and they would pour out the water to remember they would celebrate seven days in a row God's provision for the ones camping out with water that came from a rock. And we know that that rock is 
Boy, you guys, are, are you with me here today yet? So The rock is Christ. We know that, right? First Corinthians, the rock is Christ. And so when the rock was struck, out comes the living water. And they survived going through the wilderness because God provided the water. And they would celebrate that at the Feast of Tabernacles once a year to remember their culture, to remember tradition, to remember the religion, dun, da, 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 to remember. And Jesus on the last day of that grace feast, when they're pouring out the water, and all of a sudden the water's done. You know what they would do after they poured out the last seventh water? Then they would pray for the water going into the promised land. And there's Jesus, who's waited and waited and waited for 33 years. There's Jesus, who presented himself as Messiah, as Savior. There's Jesus on the last day of the last feast. By the way, chronologically for Jesus, it's his last feast. Until he comes back at Passover, it's his last time at the temple until he's the sacrificial lamb. So on the last day of the great feast, Jesus has something to say. By the way, we are in the last days. It could be your last day. You say, Pastor Bill, they've been talking about the last days forever. Oh, I know. But you see, I got my Medicare card this last week. I'm in my last days. <laughs> you can now say that Pastor Bill is officially old. Because when you get your Medicare card, that's not a happy moment. That means even the government recognized. I thought about that. I, I actually thought I'd get like a card, like a card. They send you a card. And it's like your social security card. It's just a cardboard card that says, Medicare, you're almost dead. <laughs> you say, it doesn't say that. Oh, no, I got one part of that card that says, if you are dead. And I thought, it's actually assuming I'm going to die. <laughs> Which, by the way, I am. And so are you. So when we talk about the last day of the great feast, and that Jesus has something to say to that group of people, that they have not received him, they don't recognize him. By the way, their hope, that group of people, you know, Israel, their hope is in their tradition, their hope is in their heritage, their hope is in their religion, their hope is in their culture. And they got a great religion, culture, and tradition, but it can't save them. On the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood. Can I hear an amen for Jesus? Well, now he stood up. By the way, rabbis would always stay seated, but Jesus stood. What's he doing? And he cried out. By the way, Jesus did not cry out very often. But he's going to cry out there in the middle of the temple, there in the middle of Israel, at the very end of the Feast of Tabernacles, with the water already having been poured out. Jesus says this, the source, if anyone thirsts. No, wait, Lord, Lord, Lord. You can't say anyone. Does, does your Bible say anyone? If anyone thirsts. Well, that means a Gentile gets thirsty. That means women get thirsty. That would mean poor people get thirsty. That would mean masters or slaves or servants or Roman soldiers or Republicans or Democrats. It would mean anyone. Aren't you glad Jesus said, if anyone thirsts? Can I hear an amen? You know what's so good about that? Because you're an anyone. Like, for God so loved the world that whosoever... I'm a whosoever. By the way, in case you don't know it, I'm a Gentile, white, 65-year-old, about to be 65, 
almost dead <laughs> in Emerald, Texas. <laughs> Gentile. Are you important? I'm not important at all. But I'm an anyone. I'm a whosoever that can go to the source, can go to the well and be saved. Oh, and be refreshed. Amen. See, most people don't know that. They think you got to be part of this group or that group or this color or that color or this. Anyone can get saved. Anyone. If anyone thirsts, do you know one thing about thirst? That happens to everybody, right? Have you been thirsty today? Somebody's taking a drink right now as I say it. <laughs> Great. I'm sure, has everybody here had a cup of coffee today already or a drink of water? No, I had some, well, don't keep that to yourself if you had some other stuff. But anyways, <laughs> isn't it great that we understand being thirsty? Actually, being thirsty means there's a void in your life. There's something that God needs to fill. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Now, I've shared this with you before, but please realize with me that in the Greek, it's in the present tense. If anyone thirsts, let him keep coming and keep drinking from me. You say, well, that kind of doesn't make sense to me. Well, sure it does. He is the well. We go to him. We thirst no more. We don't go thirsting for anything else. We shouldn't. We keep going to Jesus, keep drinking from him. We keep coming. We keep drinking. That's why we're still together. We do this together as well as individually. You have to understand how radical that was for Jesus to stand up there in the middle of Israel, in the middle of the temple, on the very last day and say, hey, did that solve your problem going through all of the pouring out of water? Are you still thirsty? Come to me. Keep coming to me. Keep drinking from me. Then he said, He who believes in me, as the Scriptures has said, out of his heart, out of his belly, out of his innermost being will flow rivers, torrents, floods, a gush of living water. Can you see Jesus speaking that when all the ceremonies, all the tradition, all the feasts, when it's all done, knowing that their thirst is still there? And so he throws it down. By the way, He's the source, but notice how he references the Scripture, the Scriptures. Right there where he says, he who believes in me as the Scripture has said. They have their Scriptures. That's the Old Testament. They know about a Messiah to come. They know about this anointed one. They know about the Christ. They know about the hope of Israel, the king, the prophet, the priest. If you believe in me, and then he's going to die the next time he shows up to believe. Aren't you glad we have the Bible? Aren't you glad we know what to do because we have a Bible, we have a, a love letter that you don't have to trust my, my dreams or what I read or my theology or my thoughts or what I think's going on? No, no, we have a Bible. Can I hear an amen from the Bible? So what did Jesus say? Hey, if you're thirsty, you need to keep coming, keep drinking from me to believe in me like the scriptures told you about. To trust your Bible. What's this river of life? What's this whole thing that's supposed to flow out of us? Well, then we know what that is specifically. John explained it to us. Out of his heart will flow rivers of the living water, the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit. Can I hear you say the Spirit? Whom those believing in him, there it is, believing twice, the ones believing in him, coming to him, drinking from him, that those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. They had the Holy Spirit with them, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. And then we find out the Holy Spirit in you, amen, sealing you till the day of promise. But the Holy Spirit upon you, different preposition, epi, the Holy Spirit upon you for power. What, what I'm actually trying to get across is that here, if you're thirsty, we need to come to the source. 
we need to pay attention to the scriptures to believe in him. And then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit which comes out of us somehow, somehow, the Holy Spirit like a river, like a flood that refreshes the people around us. So if I got personal with myself, I really, really believe as a church for 35 years, we've basically done that. We keep coming to Jesus. We keep receiving the Spirit, so to speak, being filled by the Spirit of God. We keep opening up the Scriptures, and we're still together. We're still together. But when I'm, like, on vacation, four weeks to where I don't have to preach. By the way, preaching will make you study and pray like you can't believe. It just does. After doing this 40 years in Amarillo, you have no idea how it's still like, Lord, if you don't show up, it ain't going to work. It's not going to work, Lord. I can't do this myself. And he knows that. He's just so faithful. But then when you get like four weeks to think, well, I don't have to preach. Are you thirsty? And so for me personally, personally, you know, nobody's calling to make sure, did you read your Bible? Did you get filled with the Spirit? What are you doing, Pastor Bill, out there all by yourself? Can I see what Jesus said in, in Luke's Gospel? Jesus answered him and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. If you remember in the context of Mark and Luke, when Jesus said that, the devil's actually tempting the Lord Jesus. Turn these stones into bread. And the Lord's answer, man shall not live by bread alone, lasagna, salad, <laughs> milkshakes. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Can I hear you say every word? That proceeds... From God, from the mouth of God is the way Mark says that. Wow. I need to be in the Word personally, personally. Can I see Colossians 3.16? Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, even when you're on vacation, even when it's Thursday, even when you're... Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I need the word. I need the word. You say, well, how did you have time to even get the word if you're driving 75 hours? And so there was times Cindy would just read the scriptures as we're driving down I-40. We spent a lot of time on I-40, and she would just read. What are you doing? We're going to the scriptures. Why? Not to learn the Bible as much as to get a drink from Jesus, to believe in Jesus fresh and anew. Are you thirsty? Well, I'll tell you what, it was hot in Fredericksburg, Virginia that reminded us, reminded me personally. Then you throw in Ephesians 5.18. Can I see it? Ephesians 5.18. Do not be drunk with wine. It's a command to us, which is dissipation, but commanded, present tense, imperative, to be filled with the Spirit. You say, what is that? Well, somewhere you got to drink from the Lord Jesus. You got to feed from the Word of the Lord Jesus. You've got to take the time to personally, vacation or no vacation, pastor or not being pastor. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? There's some things I, I thought about when I did that. Can I see the quote by Jim Symbolum? You may sit under a good pastor who teaches the Bible, but that alone won't get you to know God. You get to know God by being alone with him with an open Bible and an open heart. But Lord, I'm so busy. Don't you know I'm doing your work? Would you tell my sister to help me? Don't you love the Lord when he said, Martha, Martha, you're so distracted. 
by so many things. And by the way, a lot of the stuff that we do, it's very important things. We've got to work. We've got to drive the car. We've got to go to the grocery store. We've got to change it. Well, there's all this stuff we've got to do. But Lord, God understands that. But Mary's chosen the better part. Well, what was Mary doing? Just sitting at his feet. I would say she's taking another drink from Jesus. So somewhere at some point in time, and I know this is true for so many of us, I'm just sharing with you personally, personally. Like when I'm on vacation for four weeks, I still got to find my quiet space, my closet, my alone time with God. Sometimes it was on the front porch with Katrina's, at Katrina's house. She's got 10 chickens, and the chickens would want to join me. Okay, okay, I got this. Just don't poop on my shoes or anything, you know? And uh, that's going, but anyways, it just work, you know, you just got to hang out with God. You say, why? So that you can be fed, you can be full. Not for checking off a deal on the calendar, so that he can use you the way you want with the Holy Spirit coming out of your life. You know, the, the purpose of God is not to fill up just you in your prayer closet to where the water gets this deep. The, the water is supposed to be coming out of you. The effectiveness of the Spirit coming out of you. The fragrance of the Spirit coming out of you. The refreshment of the Spirit coming out of you. Because everybody else is mad. Basically. And God has put us right in the right neighborhood, the right schools, the right workplace, the right traffic jam. So that the Holy Spirit, like a, like a river, like a flood, should be coming from us. You guys are with me, right? Don't let that finger get you. We are ninja church. We are ninja Christians. We're looking for an opportunity to splash them with this river. It's kind of fun if you think about it. Nobody else is having a good time. We can. Now, don't take a squirt gun and start squirting people. You'll, you'll get in trouble with that. But Notice, but then if I change gears. Oh, one thing I did just to let you know. Sometimes I need, like, I bought a new preaching Bible. Matter of fact, I never marked in this Bible till yesterday. Yesterday. It didn't have a mark in it. And you say, well, how many preaching Bibles do you have? About 10. About 10. I, it takes, I can go through one in about three years. What do you mean go through it? Well, by the time I'm done, it'll be a mess. It'll be a mess. But I just, I went and I got a different format. Um, it's all new to me. I can't find stuff you know, where it should be anyways. But yesterday I'm at the library and I'm about to make my first mark in this book. It's, all, it's already messed up. I can't take it back now, okay? But I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It actually was an incentive to me personally to get back involved with the Word of God. Did that communicate at all? And so, like, if you've got to go buy a new Bible, go to the, buy a Bible, you got to get a new app on your phone, get a new app. Whatever you got to do. New place to go study with the Lord, set some time. Go do that. Whatever you got to do to get with God. You guys are not as excited about my new Bible like I am. I want to tear up this book. Why? I want it to be mine. You say, how long will it be nice? Not very long because we're going in the Gospel of John. But I'm going to do that personally. But what if I said, as a pastor, the pastoral position that I have, and we're talking about going to Jesus and getting a drink and, and the scriptures and then the spirit for, for our church, for our church. What, what, is that? what does that mean for Grace Church? Well, can I see 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 4? You guys know this. I take this so serious. seriously. I charge you. This is Paul to Timothy. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead and is appearing in his kingdom. It's official. This is a charge. Preach the word. That's given to me. Preach the word. Can I hear an amen? amen. You do not want me preaching you to you my dreams. 
You don't want that. They're scary. Uh, you don't want me just preaching to you my theology. My theology is not complete. God keeps tweaking it out all the time with his word. You don't want me preaching to you my thoughts. Preach the word. Be ready in COVID, out of COVID. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. 35 years so far in Grace Church. 35 years. With all long suffering and teaching. So just be patient. Just keep doing it. By the way, I never sit down and think, well, I need to convince them. Or I need to rebuke them. Or I need to exhort them. Can I tell you, the Bible does that all by itself. Aren't you glad? Some of you have been encouraged. Amen. Some of you have been rebuked. Well, get over it. Just listen to what God's telling you. Some of you have been convinced. Some of you don't care. I'm praying for the ones of you that don't care. For the time will come when they, when they will not endure sound doctrine. The word doctrine is not scary. It just means teaching. The time will come when they will not endure sound teaching, sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Hey, we just need another story. We just need something to make us feel good. We don't have to be careful. That's why my marching orders as a pastor is to preach the Word. It took 30 years to preach the Bible here. According to the government, I don't have 30 years left. I'll be dead. But we're going to preach the Word. But I want to be Spirit-led. I mean, our focus is the Lord. The Scriptures is what we have. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. But I want to be Spirit-led. Jesus would, was, can I see the the next slide, Matthew 4, 1. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus was Spirit-led. Can I see the one, what was my last reference, out of Romans 8? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So we know we're going to preach the Bible. I know what to do there. We're going to come to Jesus. We're going to believe the Scriptures. But how is a congregation to be Spirit-led? Through all this stuff. So I made some decisions. For our church. At Western and Plains. In Amarillo, Texas. By the way, I'm not a politician. Can I hear an amen? amen. I'm not a scientist. Can I hear an amen? amen? I'm not a physician. Can I hear an Amen. I'm not an economist. Economist. I can't even say the word. Amen. I'm a pastor at Western and Plains in Amarillo, Texas for 40 years. Lord, what do you want me to do? Should I do what the guys in California are doing? I'm glad I'm not in California. I'm in Texas. Should I do what my friends up in Colorado are doing? I'm not in Colorado. I'm in Texas. Should I do what my friends down in Austin and Houston are doing? I'm not in Austin or Houston. I'm in Amarillo, Texas. Amen. Should I do what all the other churches are thinking they're going to do in Amarillo, Texas? I'm not, all the, I'm not responsible for the church of Amarillo. Praise God. I'm only responsible for Western and Plains and Grace Church. Lord, what do you want us to do? See, I was convinced a hundred days ago that this was all be done by now. I was wrong. I was convinced by the time we get to September, COVID would be over. I was wrong. Now I say, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm smart enough to say, I don't know. Well, who's going to win the election? I don't know. What about this? I don't know. What do you want us to do? Personally, drink from the Lord Jesus. Collectively, starting Wednesday, Wednesday, four days from now, 
We're going to start a whole new walk through the Bible. Haven't started it yet. We're going to start Wednesday. We're going to start in Genesis. We're going to give an Old Testament review. And we're going to walk through the Bible, watch this, book by book, focused on the Lord Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to get all 66 books done. Last time it took 30 years. But we're going to summarize and walk through it, I'm hoping in less than three years. Unless we're going to look at the Bible Project. It starts this Wednesday. We're going to start with an overview of the Old Testament. Hang on, hang on. It's going to change your life. It's already changed mine. And we're going to be able to go through the Bible, not every verse, not read every chapter, but you can do that on your own. We're going to get the, the high points, the, the big subjects, put it all together. It's all about the Lord Jesus. It's all about Him and His Holy Spirit. It's all about the gospel. Can I hear an amen? You say, why are you doing it? Because I need it. You know, the whole book's about the Lord. And so we're going to jump in there. I, I, I've already got some uh, feedback. I think there's going to be, I, I know I'm, I'm learning new stuff. So that starts Wednesday. That's why we're going to have the treehouse opened up again, starting on Wednesday. Wednesdays, if I said, we're back to normal under orange COVID. We're back to normal. Now, how much freedom do we have? We want to do everything we can do with still COVID orange out there, which means next Sunday, guess what we'll be doing? We're in the Gospel of John. Can I hear an amen? And I'm going to show a Bible Project video for John so that people that didn't come Wednesday can see, oh, this is what you're doing. You have no idea how fun this is going to be. I'm all excited. Can you tell I'm excited? I bought a new Bible, not for me personally, but I can mark all up with you. And we're going to learn things about the Lord. Why? So that a river of life will come out of us. I don't know how much time we got left, but God didn't leave us here to have our own little club. He left us here to be a witness to get that out there in a public way. So what are we going to do? Well, what can we do under orange? By the way, men's Bible study on Tuesday morning and the evening can happen. Let's look at Scott Davey. That's a, so on Tuesdays, we can do men's Bible study. And Scott's one of the teachers of that. And you're all, he's already got the first lesson. And that's going to start a week from Tuesday, right? Am I right on that? A week from Tuesday. So the Bible project, book by book, starts Wednesday. And then his Bible study with the guy. What are you studying? Ephesians. Ephesians. That's a great book. What a great book. You know my outline for No, no anyways. Um, that's a week from, oh, a week from Thursday, Thursday, women's Bible study in the morning, in the evening are going to happen. Right, my dear wife? Right? And you're doing Colossians, Ephesians, or Colossians? Ephesians or Colossians? It's really easy, male or female, okay? So, <laughs> Colossians. And so that's on Thursdays, a week from Thursday. So what I'm trying to share with you guys, what the Spirit led me to do while I was gone, I, I don't know how long this is going to last. Well, whatever. We're going to go back to the Bible. We're going to go back to the well. We're going to go back to the Holy Spirit. We're going to go find Jesus. And how much freedom do we have? Wednesday, we can still be here. Next Sunday, both services, women, men, amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, but what about the church picnic? Well, we used to do church at the park. That's really complicated. But we're going to have a church picnic in September, and we're not going to provide the food. You're going to bring your own Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever, your own chair. And we're just going to hang out socially distanced or whatever because we can do that. We're going to do what we can do. And see how God uses us. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't. That's why to be led by this Spirit, to be involved with His Word, to have all of that, but it's public. It's public. You've got to understand the reason for this. If I said the why. You know, a ninja church, Why? Drink it from Jesus. Well, your life, your life will be so much better when you have the source and the Scripture and the Spirit. Jesus actually there in John seven thirty eight. He said, "He who believes in me, as the Scripture, we're coming to Christ, 
Come to Jesus for a fresh drink. We're in the scriptures for a fresh meal. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, out of his innermost belly, his innermost being, will flow rivers, a torrent, floods of living water. Can I see John 13, 34 and 35? Same gospel. A new commandment Jesus said, I give to you. That you love one another. As I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Somehow when we keep going to Jesus, when we keep coming to the Word of God, when we get our focus that, Lord, I, I just need you. I need to be refreshed. Would you feed me, Lord? Would you fill me with your Spirit? That somehow when that happens, that results in you having this, this living water, this river of life this refreshment. And, and the word that's used there is actually a flood, a torrent. My, my desire for Grace Church is not for a little stream to go out of the front door here to Western and Plains. My desire is that somehow there would be like a flood, like a torrent. But when Jesus said that, he was talking about you. That when you go through your life, whatever family reunion, whatever picnic you go to, wherever, whatever you do today, that there should be something coming out of you. That's the Holy Spirit, this refreshment that, that people would just sense that there's something different about you. What is that? Love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And I can tell you right now, ain't nobody out there loving each other. They're burning it down. They're turning it over. They're pounding on the door. And Jesus left us, us, right here in the middle of a mess so that a river of life could flow from us. You say, well, how does that happen? The way he wants it to happen. See, I got a really good friend that 25 years ago, 25 years, Years ago, when I, I was only 40, my voice was a lot higher when I was 40. And my friend, Dennis Clounch, was only 55. And we're preaching through the Bible 25 years ago. When Caleb said, give me the mountain to Moses. By the way, Caleb was 80 when he said that. He got the mountain. Pretty brave prayer for an 80-year-old. Amen, Scott? Scott Davies is 86, so Caleb ain't got nothing on Scott. Well, Dennis Clouds comes to my office, and we prayed. He said, I want the mountain of radio. Well, I don't even know what that means. So in Amarillo, Texas, you would think, okay, maybe a 15-minute program on a local radio station. By the way, radio is not my idea. I didn't pray the prayer. God didn't give me the burden. God gives me the burden to preach live to you guys. Dennis Clowns got the burden to put it on radio. So I guess maybe a 15, maybe a 30-minute program would be the mountain. Don't tell God what the mountain is. So over 25 years, we get local not a program. We get a local radio station. And then over 25 years, we get two. And then there was a time we had four different radio stations in Amarillo, Texas, that was our radio station. That's really impressive when you can hit four places on the dial, and it's radio, 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 radio. And it's all, it makes us look like, who did that? God with a mountain. And then it starts going to Clovis, New Mexico. And now it's in Big Springs, and it's about to go into Lubbock. And you start talking about this, and all Dalhart and Dumas and Pamp and all that. How did that happen? I didn't pray the prayer. But while we've been on hold, radio has not been on hold. And so, what, two and a half, almost three years ago, we were given a network across the country of radio How'd that happen? I didn't pray the prayer. My friend who has this desire for the gospel to go out like a, like a river, like a flood, 
He prayed the prayer, but he had no idea that Memphis and New Orleans and Atlanta and Miami, that, that God was going to go like crazy with this. I'm just a little preacher in Emerald, Texas. And God said, you watch me answer the prayer for Dennis, who's now 81. And I know when I say that, you do the math like I do. But while we've been stuck in COVID, radio has updated all these stations. To where when I say HD, you guys know HD in Amarillo with Radio by Grace. I mean, it's unbelievable. But see, when you're driving through Memphis on a Friday, getting back to Amarillo, and you hit the dial in Memphis. By the way, Memphis is bigger than Amarillo like by a factor of 10 well, about eight altogether. 1.3 million. Now, wait a minute. This feels like a flood. So it was his birthday. It was Dennis's birthday. And just to let you know, I sent him this video. And I didn't know I was going to use it. But this communicates how God wants a river of life, the gospel coming out of Grace Church. And one guy that prayed the prayer. Happy birthday, brother. Driving through Memphis right now and uh, listening to Freedom Radio, Radio by Grace. Right now, this is all your fault. So thousands and thousands of people are hearing the gospel. They're hearing a song that Landry picked out right now. And I couldn't think of a better birthday present than to say thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Memphis, right now, is hearing the gospel because of you. And if you go around and you think of New Orleans and Atlanta and Miami and on and on and on and Amarillo, thank you, Dennis. So here's proof. So strong signal, all good. I love you. Cindy loves you. Happy birthday, buddy. We'll see you in a couple days. Bye. So Grace Church, whether you realize it or not, there is a river of life, the gospel, the message of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the power of the Holy Spirit, all of that. There is a river, yes, here at Western and Plains, yes, through you, but can I say, in a mighty way in Memphis, do the math. And when you go through all of that, and so God did that for one man in his prayer I know that God will still bless however he wants that to look, Grace Church. So we are the ninja church. You are the ninja warriors. We keep running because we're thirsty to Jesus. We keep drinking from Jesus. He's the source. We keep going to the scriptures to believe in him the way the scriptures has taught us. And we want the Holy Spirit to fill us and to flow through us so that others in all their stuff can see the love of Christ and the only one that can meet their needs. Amen? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Grace Church. I thank you with all the things, Lord, that are trying to separate us. I thank you that your word, your spirit, the Lord Jesus himself, we have to be connected. We want to be connected. And the love, Lord, the only thing that will get us through this, the hope for this world, is the very love of God that gave his only begotten son. Help us, Lord Jesus, as we go through our own stuff and we start to think, well, maybe we can satisfy the thirst with this or that or, Lord, it can only be you. And how I thank you for grace, church, but protect us from traditions. How I thank you for grace, but protect us from going through the motions. And Lord, as we jump off into some new studies with your word, I pray your Holy Spirit to bless us. Give us a greater love for Jesus. Lord Jesus, I can't make my heart love you more, but I pray that it would. We get so, so frustrated 
We give you our country, Lord. It's a mess. We come to our own city at times, Lord. Our neighborhood's here. It's pressurized. And sometimes in our own families, our own marriages. Fights and disagreements over things we can't change. I trust you that COVID soon would be over. I trust you with elections, economies, misunderstandings and hurts and wounds and injustice. I trust you that our voice could be heard, but most important, with the gospel to solve any problem at any level and not that root problem of sin it's just so temporary you've entrusted to Grace Church the gospel the good news of Christ Not to keep ourselves entertained, not to keep ourselves in harmony, but that we might have a message that's worth fighting for, that's worth dying for. So how I thank you for a vision and a dream that Dennis had 25 years ago and to see him still fighting for that, pouring his life into it, it humbles me. And to watch you bless it, Lord, that today thousands and thousands of people will hear the gospel. And so many times we, we get thirsty and we go to other sources. We find out very quickly, Lord, they don't satisfy any entertainment, any hobby, any endeavor, even family, Lord. And there's a place for all those good things, but not to take the place of drinking from the well. So I thank you for a ninja church that has held together and that we keep running to Jesus and I pray with Bible study starting back up and a new project Lord on Wednesdays a new gospel to bust open next week just pray that you would bless your word you promised to do that but that we would be filled with your spirit Lord that there be a river of life in my marriage with my kids, with my neighbors in our city, a river of life. Thank you that it's easy to figure out we just need Jesus. We need another drink. And I thank you for the first time, Lord, that first drink when you call us by name and all of a sudden we realize I've got to come to Christ I've got to come to Jesus you could be here today and you've tried to substitute all these things and all this stuff even church and yet the only thing that can quench your thirst is Jesus and that that first drink that first time you say yes to him and you drink drink deep of the Lord, you believe in him, you have faith in him, you get saved, the Holy Spirit just invades your life. I mean, it's unbelievable, but you have a sense of like, I need something, I need something. Jesus comes along and says, you need me. You need me. 
And then for others, we experience that salvation, but then we get dry. We let other things come in place. And it's been so long, and it's like you have to come back to him and drink again. Could be you're here today or you're watching online, and you've never said yes to Jesus. He's so polite, he knocks on the door of your heart. But you get to make a decision whether you let him in or not whether you drink or not. Or the conviction of the Holy Spirit that you're just so dry, so dry, you need a fresh drink from the Lord. I invite you, if you're out there on the internet, to say yes to Jesus, right where you're at, to pray with us right now. If you're in the room, though, if you're here in the room, and you just, for salvation or just a second chance to come back to him. You just know, if you need Christ right now to stand up, let me pray for you in the room. If there's anybody here, just by standing, you're saying, I just need Jesus. Like, now, I need Jesus as my Savior. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you, guys. Thank you for these two over here. Anybody else? Thank you, brother. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And I got to believe out there, I don't know how many are watching, but man, I want to include you too, or on the radio, how many are listening right now? I don't know. Father, I thank you for the dozen or so that stand in this room. You know their hearts. I know the answer is your son. So let them drink deep. Let them believe. Save them, Lord. As they say yes to you, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would invade their lives. Change them from the inside out. And I pray that same, Lord, for the ones on internet and on radio right now. We just trust you. It's your gospel, Lord. You know how to save your people. We just come to Christ. We come to Christ. And that, Lord, as a result, there would be this freshness in us, this living water in us that others could just tell you've been with the Lord. We trust you with our country. We trust you with the world. Find us faithful, Lord. Thank you for these salvations. In the name of Christ, we pray. God's people would say. You guys want to thank these ones that are standing? And... I love you guys. It's good to be back.